Okay, so this is the beginning of module one. What is economics? Uh, so, basically economics boils down to the study of scarcity and choice. Uh, this idea of scarcity is that there's a limited amount of resources to try to fulfill unlimited amounts of wants and needs. And because of this, we're forced to make choices. And that's one of the things that, whether you go on to study economics or not, making good choices, knowing how to make better decisions, is something that I think everybody can sort of benefit from. So there are four categories of scarce resources that we're going to be talking about. These are also referred to as the factors of production. The first one is land. And land is going to be considered anything that comes from the earth, things that we would call natural resources, coal, water, sunlight, things like that. The second category of scarce resources is labor, which is the effort of workers. The people that plow the fields, enter data, teach kids, patrol our streets, all of those things are referred to as labor. The third category of scarce resource is capital. This one is maybe not quite as intuitive. Capital, put quite simply, are the tools or machines that are used to produce other goods and services. Scissors, tractors, assembly lines, computers, calculators. Those are all uh, referred to as capital. There's also something called human capital, which are the ideas and knowledge that uh, people acquire as they move through life. So human capital would be when you learn how to operate a machine, when you learn how to enter uh, data in a spreadsheet. All of that knowledge that you acquire is referred to as human capital. And then the last of the scarce resources is entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurs are the risk takers, the people that combine the factors of production in new and unique ways to create a variety of goods and services. People like Steve Jobs, right, influenced and changed many of our lives with the iPhone and the Apple computer. And Walt Disney, also an entrepreneur, but there are hundreds and thousands more um, that we can talk to about. So, um... Four scarce resources, land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship. These are also referred to as the factors of production. Very, very important to understand. So now, let's talk about this idea of opportunity costs. Okay? Um, anytime you try to make a decision, okay, that involves trade-offs. Where am I going to go to college? Am I going to attend the University of Texas? Or am I going to attend the University of Colorado? Okay, that decision that I'm engaged in is referred to as a trade-off. I'm going to do one thing or am I going to do the other? Once you make a decision, that next best alternative that you give up, that is also known as your opportunity cost. So if I make decision decision to attend the University of Texas, what is my opportunity cost? Well, I'm no longer going to be able to attend the University of Colorado. Okay? So once you make a decision, whether it's what am I going to have for lunch, where, where am I going to spend my money, on a national level, am I going to put money towards the military or rebuild infrastructure? Whichever is not chosen, that is called the opportunity cost. Uh, once again, another very, very important idea in economics. So macroeconomics versus microeconomics, I think this is something that a lot of you are going to have an easy time understanding just because you're familiar with the terms macro and micro. Microeconomics deals with individual decision making, small units of society, individuals, small businesses, um, and the decisions that they make. Macroeconomics, on the other hand, deals with the bigger picture, national economies, the world economy. Okay, so make sure you're able to just kind of recognize the difference between those two. This class, of course, is macro. We're going to be looking at the economy of the United States. In looking at the U.S. economy, we focus on three major um, ideas. The first one is unemployment. 
This is one of the major indicators of the health of an economy. The next one is inflation, which we'll talk about. This is the rise in the general price level. And the last one is GDP, gross domestic product, or the output of a country. We'll talk about some other things. Another important thing that we'll talk about are wages. But these are the three major factors that we're going to discuss in this class. Uh, another idea that's important to know just here at the outset is the difference between positive and normative economics. Positive statements, okay, are statements that have a definite right and a definite wrong answer. They can be verified, okay. Uh, doesn't mean you necessarily like it, agree with it, but this is, um, can be proven, okay. So, if we're looking at a sports stadium, we might say, uh, in order to build this stadium, we're going to need to raise taxes on uh, hotel rooms by 1%, okay? You might not like that, but you can prove that. Normative statements involve value judgments. They inv uh, involve ideas, I think this should happen, or I would like this to happen, okay? Okay. Uh, it's a good idea to raise hotel taxes by 1%. Well, some people might think it's a good idea. Some people might not. Okay, so that's what a normative statement is. It's not something that people can prove. It's a matter of opinion. And then finally, we want to talk about this idea that there is no such thing as a free lunch. Okay, meaning... Even though you might be getting something for free, somewhere, somewhere down the line, someone is paying for that. Think about what I talked to you about, you know, at the beginning days of class, about one of you winning a free lunch. Is that lunch really free? You're not paying for it. And you say to yourself, well, no, it's not free. You have to give something up, which is the chance to go to the bathroom whenever you want. Now, you can go, but then you're giving up that free lunch, and there's the idea of opportunity costs and trade-offs once again.